and his brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, I speak a lot on meat and milk. Uh, and when your discernment gets a little bit more sharper and exercised in the senses that we're supposed to have, you become an instrument of discernment for God and God's people. Uh, a lot of people, honestly, they don't know our gospel. A lot of people, honestly, do not know the doctrine of God. A lot of people are honestly not following God as they should. Today we're going to speak on something. I take, I really pray that y'all all take heed to this. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. And one with no understanding will take that as meaning that God loves everyone equally because he loves the world. And if you get into God's doctrine, you'll see in John 14, 21 through 24, the Lord God himself says, these ain't my words. These are the words of the one that sent me. In other words, this is God speaking right now. And God says, I shall love you when you receive and keep my commandments. God doesn't say he loves you. God says he shall love you when you receive and keep his commandments. There's a difference in the love spoken of in John 3.16, for God so loved the world, and the love that God has for the saints. I'll read you a couple of them. Y'all can go look them up. I'm just going to hit shorties. Uh, 1 John 4, 7-8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. We see the word beloved there. Colossians 3, 12. Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. We see the word beloved. First uh, John three one through two. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knew us not, knoweth us not, because it knew not Him. We can see there's a different type of love. There's a love that the Father bestowed upon us, His beloved. Uh, Matthew seventeen five. Uh, while He yet spake bright behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice from the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased hear ye him once again we see the word beloved first john 4 1 beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone out in the world again we see the word beloved uh Romans 1, 7, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God your Father uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved again, 3 John 1, 2, beloved, I wish... Uh, Above all things, that thou mightst prosper, being healthy, even as their soul prospers. Beloved, uh, Ephesians 5, uh, and here we see followers of God. This is what I was talking about. People's not really following God in the way they should. I'm not saying they're not saints. I cannot say they're not sealed. I'm just saying they are not followers of God. Um, so, <laughs> beloved, when we first come into the faith, we are told in Scripture to add knowledge. And, and, and right there, there's a lot of saints not following God. They're not adding knowledge, which means you have to get into the Scriptures. Uh, 
and see what God says about this so you won't be deceived by all these false doctrines and these traditions of men and, and on such and on such. Uh, talk to love. My God, y'all have heard me seek it for. Uh, uh, but it's touching uh, brotherly love. Uh, ye not, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye ye selves are taught of God to love one another. See, it, God has to teach us to love. We can't come into the faith and remain in that love that we think is love and, and bring it in. We can't bring it in. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, where is this at right here? Let me speak on this for a minute. Uh, I'm going to give you a... Uh, uh, And I'm going to tell you, this right here is a big thing right here. Uh, first, uh, uh, Corinthians 11, 16. Now, Paul is speaking on several things. Head coverings and all kinds of stuff. Long hair, all kinds of stuff. And what it, what it was was this. There were some folks that were coming out of the world into the faith. And they were trying to bring in worldly customs. You know, customs of old. And do you know that worldly love is a custom? It's something that the world teaches you. Yeah, it's not taught by God. The world doesn't know how to love. We, we're to be taught by love. And this worldly love is no more than, than a custom in God's eyes. And it says here, if any man be contentious, we have no such customs now in the church of God. We are to love as God loves. That's right. Uh, now, how does how does God love? Uh, does He chastise an unbeliever? No. We know by Scripture that God chastises those He loves, and we understand that. Also, in our doctors, let me pull this up so I can I can say this correctly, and I don't I don't mess it up. I uh, don't like to misquote God. Uh, uh, do not treat him as an enemy. Okay. Second uh, Thessalonians three fifteen. Now, what Paul is speaking on here is, uh, but ye brethren be not weary in well doing, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, and this all of the epistles, uh, note that man have no company with him, uh, that he may be ashamed. Now, see, here's something. Here's what separates. This shows us a separation in, in the love of, for the beloved and the love for the world. Because uh, we're not supposed to love the world, but we're supposed to show them kindness and mercy and compassion and all that. But, but we need to understand that there is a different love. Uh, yet count not as an enemy, but admonish as a brother. See, we can admonish a brother. Why? Because they are the beloved. They are in the house of faith. We cannot admonish those outside the house of faith. That's God's job. Yeah. And, and he don't even, he don't even, uh, uh, he don't chastise those. And we can't chastise them. We can't even judge them. That's in First Corinthians 5. So, what I'm trying to say here, The most humbling thing that one can do as a child of God is admit to things they don't understand. Well, I don't understand that. Well, you know something? Nobody does it in the beginning. Nobody does it in the beginning. Love your enemy. A lot of people say, well, tell us, tell us to love our enemy. We are. But there's a love for the beloved and there's a love for the enemy, yet count not as an enemy, but admonish as a brother. See? And what's going on is simply this. There's a lot of people out there loving in a worldly manner and not loving as God charges us to. And brothers and sisters, I got news for you. If you fall in that category, even if you don't know it, because we are without excuse anymore. We've got the Holy Scripture revealed to us that teaches us, guides us, and through the Holy Spirit develops fruit of the love of God. 
purging out that old love of the world, that matter of love. Can you be the most loving person by display? Can can you be a can you do that and uh, not be a follower of God? Indeed, you can. Indeed, you can. In loving a lot of people in a worldly manner, you're partaking in their sins. So, we need to understand this. Truth. For God so loved the world. Truth. I will love you and I shall love you when you receive my words, my commandments, and keep them. Let's understand that. Now, that's God saying. Not old Brother Andy, that's God saying. <coughs> is there a love that we display toward an unbeliever that is different from the love that we display unto God's beloved? Absolutely. It's all throughout Scripture. Can we be in transgressional sin and not actually following God as we should be because we are loving in a worldly manner? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, that's just food for thought. Uh, I always bring it for you. Those things that are needful. Uh, until your faith add knowledge. That's the first that's the first thing that we're told to do is add knowledge. Until your faith, you must be diligent in adding knowledge. And and let God do the rest on the understanding. So see y'all next time around.